you are the stars of the summit. Uh, they are not the presenters, not, they are not the keynote, uh, uh, keynote speakers, but uh, it's really you. And that's why we organized this summit. And that was really, if you go back to the reasons why we wanted to do something different, uh, this is exactly it. Because if we had spent the past three days uh, listening to 170 presentations, I think we would be pretty tired, but now we are pretty energized and, and great presentations. But I want to go back to sort of reflecting a little bit about uh, the past few days and, and pick up a few words uh, that I think that have been raised in, 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 in many of the presentations. Words like scale, um, I think we've been talking a lot about how to scale up things and how to really get uh, this uh, map, what we just saw there, not just to have 22 sp uh, spots, but maybe 100, 150 over the coming years. It's going to be a big challenge, but uh, we need all of us uh, to be the thought leaders and, and leaders in our communities to push that uh, topic further. Also, we've been talking a lot about reach and access, you know, how to get to the rural areas and, and how to make sure that, uh, that it's not only us, but it's also the base of the pyramid that will benefit uh, from these innovations and have access to information, value-added services, because there is where the biggest opportunity lies in terms of having broad uh, socioeconomic uh, impact. Also, uh, we've heard a lot about collaboration. Collaboration is a massively important word, and, uh, and I think that, that it's something which is just dawning on us, that what does it actually mean when, when public sector, private sector, all the different stakeholders work together, and, and how do we minimize those barriers and, and sort of lubricate the whole system so that it works as one? I also want to go a little bit back to, to my own uh, opening remarks. So I put down a challenge, which was really to, to scale up things, to reach that critical mass. We are now here about 100 and 170 people, 180 people, but we all need to become the change agents in our own communities and to drive creation of the next 200 people in our own communities and who will then create the next 200. So it's going to be a kind of ripple-down effect where we gradually have thousands and thousands of people, tens of thousands of people who actually are the advocates for the change what we are, what we are looking for. The paradigm shift is, is one of the words that I was also mentioning there in the beginning. So I think that, uh, that through this uh, type of debate, I'm sure that we all understand, uh, understood that, that it requires also behavioral change. And, um, and I was so pleased, uh, for example, earlier today, um, a colleague from, uh, from NITA, uh, from Nigeria came to me and said that I could actually donate five hours of my weekly uh, working time to support these initiatives, which is exactly the spirit what we are, what we are looking at here. So governmental uh, stakeholders, the private sector, all of us coming together. But also one thing what I want to go back to a little bit is the innovation environment itself. So, so I just really want to uh, remind you that what we have seen here now is really about creating an environment where we have the right type of spirit, right type of behavior, and that will stimulate innovation. It is not the buildings, it is not the organizations, but it's about all of us coming together. And that's why we need to be very careful on how we invest in the development of the innovation system and ecosystem in Africa. So sometimes we have a bit of a, bit of a let's say, uh, too much, I would say too much stress on, on the buildings and big initiatives themselves, because it can start from very small things which can create massive impact on societies. Let's just remember that. And then uh, to the central theme of the, of the summit, leadership. And I, I'm sure that, uh, that uh, everyone were very inspired by Fred uh, and, and Patrick on Monday, really having the vision of how do we build the, the, the let's say, the next generation of African leaders and, and what kind of things we need to get going. How to build trust, uh, how to get people to collaborate, process-based learning, creating also an environment. As we saw in, in Patrick's uh, presentation, the pictures of, uh, of Asher's university, Think about that space, you know, everyone can participate, can have a dialogue, have a debate, question each other. That's what we need, because through that debate, through this debate, we all learn. Uh, so we also have to be really thinking uh, critically about what type of environment we are creating for uh, the next generation leaders. I think it's very, very critical that we don't just focus on engineers, but we also look at artists, we look at uh, uh, designers, we look at uh, economists, all of us coming together. I think it's very critical that we don't limit ourselves too much. And then uh, going to um, uh, Shiv's and, and uh, Dr. Murier's uh, presentations, I think that there were two critical themes there. One was about, about uh, uh, smart simplicity. And I think that's really fundamental concept. Simplicity is not simple. It is actually pretty complex. But, uh, and it comes from a lot of analysis, a lot of understanding how things actually work. But the end goal has to be that the setup itself, the organization, your approach itself has to be simple. People need to understand it. And we, sometimes we overcomplicate things. And a good example, I think, that sometimes in the public sector particularly, if we have a government which has 45 sectors, 
unfortunately, that, that is a dis dysfunctional government. It cannot function. Any organization that has 10 teams, 15 teams working in parallel, it doesn't work because the human mind can't stretch there. So we have to be looking at creatively also how we stimulate, let's say, the building of the overall ecosystem, but also how we build the institutions themselves that drive innovation in the background. And second point uh, uh, from those presentations was really the power of cooperation. I already mentioned about that, but it's really how do we lubricate the innovation ecosystem and make sure that we don't build those intermediary operators that try to enable innovation and try to enable collaboration, but we really, really make sure that different parties face-to-face -face have a chat, have a discussion. Like today, we've had uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, and innovators and uh, policymakers talking to each other openly and proposing collaboration to each other. That's what we're after. That's really what we're after. But just a few words about the continuation from here. As I said, we're trying really to do uh, our best to make sure that, that this process continues. It doesn't stop here. So what we're going to do now over the coming few weeks, we're going to write summaries of each of the four streams. So we're going to do very compact documents, two, three, four pages, which also then link you to the, to the material on, online, to the YouTube videos or, 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 or photo uh, websites and so forth. But we try to summarize. But we also try to make some recommendations and my proposal is that then, in a few weeks' time, we're going to circulate these documents and we're going to ask from you that do you agree with the recommendations that we have? Because the power, uh, what we have here now, is that we could all sign up to those recommendations and use them then as documents when we talk to governments, when we talk to our own stakeholders in, in our respective communities to push for these topics further. So it's not Nokia, it is not InfraDev, but it's actually all of us together as a community pushing for these topics further because we need to create this critical community and a critical mass of like-minded people to push for the innovation, to be the central motor of Africa's development. But the second thing is that, uh, that we're going to uh, create an online uh, web space. So basically, we're going to use the same space as what we used for the ideation competition. So we're going to put all of these initiatives in there, which also opens it up, not only for us, but also the external community. Uh, in the Ideas Project, we have currently about 20,000 people who are registered for it. So basically, it, it allows people around the world to participate in debate, share their ideas, and contribute. And of course, there are very tangible things as well. So I'm sure that on, on World Bank's side, uh, they are very critically looking at these different initiatives. I know that uh, Tim had an objective of looking at, at how to take some of these initiatives further under the e-transform. We will be committed to uh, continuing supporting different type of innovation hubs, innovation laboratories, mobile application laboratories around the continent and also establishing new ones over the coming years. We also will be um, organizing different type of initiatives and, and events like this at the local level. So, so we have, uh, folks, together with Microsoft, uh, we have plans to organize what we call innovation forums at the country levels. Uh, we also uh, have partnered now about three, four weeks ago uh, we launched a partnership called uh, Lions Africa. And Lions Africa is a partnership with, uh, with uh, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, US State de Department. So we're going to have uh, the first demo Africa uh, here in Nairobi, uh, which will bring together a massive amount of developers around the world, venture capitalists, and uh, I think it's going to be a great, great, great event. But, so there will be a series of events which continue stimulating the same type of debate, both here but also in, in, in your respective countries. So there's a commitment from our side. But anyway, so I want to end once again uh, just by thanking all of you because uh, it's, it's been magnificent. I also want to thank all of the partners. Uh, InfoDev, it's been great uh, to work with you, uh, you guys over the past uh, actually eight months. It's been a long process for pulling this together, preparing the documentaries and you know, all of that. It's been, it's been quite, a, quite, a, quite a work. I want to thank uh, Finnish government uh, for supporting the Creating Sustainable Businesses in the Knowledge Economy program. I want to thank the uh, Kenyan government, uh, Dr. Ndemo, for coming back and, uh, and listening to the, uh, to the great presentations. And I want to really thank the Cap Germany team. So, same as, as last time around, uh, actually these guys are on holiday. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, it's a very strange way of spending holidays, but, uh, but uh, I respect that a lot. And, uh, and uh, I really want to give a big hand to all of the partners, all of you here, and uh, see you soon. <laughs>